In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this basic layout using Divi. I'll show you how to uh, make sure these buttons here are side by side. And I'll also show you how to use Flexbox to make these images also align side by side. Now, this design is fully responsive and I'll also show you how to achieve that. I'm going to be using the Divi framework site crafter and also if you are a Divi user and you'd like to learn how to design professional looking websites head over to diviuniversity.com and join the community over there it is absolutely free all right so let's get started so here we're going to start off by deleting what we have so far so we're going to start this tutorial over here by the buttons because uh, I've already designed this uh, in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that, go ahead and check it out. Next, we're going to come over here and go to the background and we're going to remove our background pattern that we added over here. And we're also going to remove the gradient. Now over here on the bottom, we're also going to just delete this section. So now we are ready to start. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to add a new row. So if you want to place buttons side by side, you may be thinking, well, maybe the best thing to do is to add two columns and then we're going to add our button like that and then duplicate it and add it into the other column like that. But you see, this is <laughs> pretty much not uh, workable, even if you align this to the left. So if I come over here to design alignment and then align this to the left, and then do the same thing over here. Align this to the left. Design alignment. Oh, this one needs to be aligned to the right. Okay. Now, when it, when it comes to really precisely making sure that uh, you want the desired um, spacing between here, then what you need to start doing now is to add another column. And then you want to give the column a size. So this is where you would come over here and choose maybe a different size or maybe even a different setup altogether. But as you can see, this becomes more and more complicated. Now, let me show you a quick way that you can achieve this using Site Crafter. So let's delete this and start from scratch. I'm going to go in now and add our row. And in this row, we're going to add a button like that. OK, so that's the first stage. We're going to go ahead and save. Next, we're going to duplicate this like that. And then we're going to now come into this row settings, click on the gear icon. Now this part is very important because our code needs to come into this column right here. So let's go ahead and select it. Next, you want to come over here to advanced CSS ID and classes, and then you want to add flex. So just by saying flex, you notice now that they are side by side, but we're not there yet because uh, we need to add our gap. So we're going to say gap dash medium. Now you notice that we've just added our gap. Now the beauty of using this option is we can change the gap sizes. So if you want to make it slightly bigger, we can say gap and then we can say large. Okay, I know it's a slight difference, but um, we have the ability to go in and change the sizes between the two buttons. Now, we want to make sure that this now comes to the center of our design. So to achieve that, I'm just going to go to my reference here for my framework. And by the way, if you are using Site Crafter, you can just go to forward slash framework on your website. So what we need here is a flex box. So I've just forgotten how to align my thing center. So sometimes you can say, okay, maybe this one here makes sense. It says align center. You'd copy that and paste it over here. Now, of course, that didn't work. But the cool thing is you don't have to worry about that because you just get rid of it. Go back and the correct one is justify center. So you just copy that like that. Come back over here and then paste it. All right. So now everything is in the center and we are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. OK. Now we need to make some adjustments to our button because as you can see, these are the same. Usually you want to have a different style to this one. So let's go ahead and make sure it has the outline. So we're going to come over here to button for our text size. I'm just going to leave uh, as it is. And then for our background color, this is what we're going to change to transparent. OK, for our border width, we're going to set this to two and then we're going to choose our border color. I'm just going to go with this. 
And now we need our button text color. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and select this one. <clears throat> now let's go further down and uh, we need to adjust this, uh, the spacing here because as you can see, the button doesn't look right in terms of the spacing. So I'm going to reduce this to maybe about 10. Okay, so now the buttons are similar size. So, so far so good. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Now, remember, we need to have our spacing looking really, really good. And um, to achieve that, we need to come over here to advanced CSS ID and classes. So first of all, I want to add no padding to my to my um, row. And then I'm going to say margin dash top. And I'm going to make sure that this is medium so that I can separate my buttons from my text that is above there. And this is kind of like the, the right size. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and save. So pretty much we are good to go now. It's time now to work on the background. So just to add a bit of a style here, I'm going to go into my section settings and then we're going to come over here to background. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a gradient. So I'm going to click on this plus button. So right now, uh, my gradient, you know, it's okay. You can choose whatever, you know, style you want to go with. But for this design, we're going to set this to, in fact, let's change the colors first. I'm going to come over here and just remove um, that color and make it transparent. And then over here on the gradient, I'm going to add a bit of transparency like that. Now, but this is something I can go in and adjust, you know, as I'm designing this. Next, we need to add a background pattern. So over here, we have several patterns. Uh, so let's go in and choose the pattern that we want. And the one that I'm looking for is I'm looking for dots. So let's go with this one here. OK, so you can see here they're added in the background. So you can actually leave the design as it is where it's um, bright at the top and then dark at the bottom. You know, it's pretty much up to you. But uh, for our design now, I can also change this. In fact, I'm in the wrong place. I can come over here to gradient and I can set it up as circular. OK, like that. But if it's too much, I can always go in and make some adjustments. This is where I was saying you can, you know, concentrate it here uh, to the center like that. But as we have that selected, we can also adjust the color by coming over here. And if it's a bit too much, you can reduce it just like that. And then you can also play around with this as well. Bring it more to the center if you want to. There we go. So you can see here my dots in the background are showing. And I can also adjust the intensity of the dots by coming over here. So I can make it bright, but of course you'd want to do that. So just make sure that it's very subtle, okay? Something like something like that, okay? And you can also play around with these other settings here about the pattern offset and so on. But uh, I'm not going to bother with that. I'll just leave that as it is. And we can also uh, add some repeat if we need to. Here we have actual size. We can stretch to fit. We can also add our custom size. So if you want to make them bigger, it's up to you. You can play around with that as well. But I'm going to keep things very simple. And then hit save. So that is our main design. Now let's go ahead and add another regular section here. So for this, we're going to add a single column. Now in this column, we're going to add some text like that. All right. So now that we have our text, I'm just going to copy some lorem uh, text over here and paste it. OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to need a title to this. So there's two ways you can do this. You can have it separate. But if you want a quick way of doing it, you can just highlight this, set this to heading three like that. And then over here on the design, you can go ahead now and center everything. OK, so everything is now centered. So the next part now is to enter our content. Again, we're going to go in and add a single row. And in this row, we're going to add an image. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, so with this image now, 
we can choose the images that we have already in our media library. So I'm just going to go with that for now. Upload image. Okay. And then what I'm going to do next now is to just duplicate this image a few times. So I'm going to go ahead and save, and then we're going to duplicate it. So I've, du I've duplicated it twice. So here's the fun part. Again, using Flexbox, we're going to come over here to row settings. Next, we're going to come over here to advanced CSS ID and classes. So remember before on the buttons, we used flex, right? But this time we want to use Flexbox. In fact, I'm in the wrong place. Let's come back over here to content. We need to come over here. Okay. So click on advanced CSS ID and classes. So here we can start off using flex, but this is where now we need to go in and adjust everything manually, like centering everything, adding the gap and so on. But if you say flex box, automatically everything is set for you, which means you don't have to go in and do all that extra stuff. Now, before I can show you that this is responsive and so on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, just make sure that my sizing here is all okay. So I'm going to start with my first row here and say no padding because I want to add specific sizes to this. So I'm going to say no padding like that. And then I'm going to copy this, do that to the same on the bottom here. We're going to go in advanced ID and classes. Again, we're going to say no padding like that. So everything seems like it's very close together. So all I need to do now is to just to say margin top. And I'm going to set this to medium like that. Now, if I want to make it, you know, um, larger, I can just go in and say large. Let's try that. Yeah, I think that is better. Okay, let's go ahead now and save. Whoops, now that's a bit too much. So let's go back in and fix that. Let's go with medium. So let's change this to margin top, set this to medium. All right, great. So now that I have that set, I'm going to save this. And then finally, we're going to come over here, go to advanced CSS ID and classes. And then I'm going to say large heading. No, uh, large section. There we go. So we're going to save that. So, so far, so good. So you can see now I've managed to um, put my design together. So all I have to do now is to save this. And let's take a quick look and see if this is responsive. So I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. And now when I drag this, you can see here my text is getting smaller and smaller and everything is in place. Everything looks great. And when I look at the bottom here, you can see that the spacing between my images here is also pretty cool. Okay. So this is a design which is ready to go. You don't have to spend you know, time going into the builder, setting your sizes and so on. Now, let me also show you something quickly. And that is if we enable our visual builder here, let's say you want two images. Uh, it is very easy. You can just go in and delete this one and everything just readjusts and pretty much everything looks you know, great. So maybe this is a layout where you want to have two images. Perhaps maybe you want to have four. You can just duplicate this like that. And now you have four images along uh, in your row. And these are responsive. You don't have to go in and do uh, any more changes to this. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be sharing this. So... I'm going to go ahead and uh, export this. So let's call this um, SK Hero. And uh, let's name this 01. Okay. So I'm going to say export. Okay, great. So now it's, uh, it's exported. So if you want to import it now, I'm going to save it as a zip. So what I'm going to do now is to first of all zip it because I can't share it as it is. So I'm just going to go in and compress. Okay. So when you get it, it is going to be a zip file. So what you need to do now is to double click on it and you can see here it's open. So let's assume this is our page. I'm going to go in 
and delete everything here by clicking over here. Okay. So now we have a blank design. So in order for us to import our design, which is our SK Hero 1 here, you need to unzip the, the, the file and then you can come over here, click on import. And then what you want to do is to just drag and drop it in here like that, replace existing content and then click on import. Just like that, it's imported. Now you can use this design as you want. And all you have to do is to go in, change your text here, and pretty much you are good to go. Now, this only works with Site Crafter. So if you are going to use this on Divi, it, it definitely won't work. It's going to work with Site Crafter. So make sure that uh, you have Site Crafter installed. And then when you um, just drag and drop it in, it is going to have a similar layout. But this could be a good starting point for a basic uh, website that you could be working on. So go ahead. The link to that is in the video description below to download it. And if you haven't purchased Site Crafter yet, uh, we are at 40% discount. So go ahead and grab your copy. This will also give you uh, access to a lifetime membership on Divi University, which means you'll get access to all future courses, uh, all layouts to do with Divi 5 as Divi 5 is coming out very, very soon. So take advantage of that. Link to that is also in the video description below. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.